Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Wiki Weekdays podcast. I am your host for this week's episode, and of course, I am joined, as always, by the lovely Carl Smallwood. Big thumbs up. Hello. Big thumbs up. I like how you started doing that and then went, oh, wait, there's an audio version. I've yeah, got, I've got to talk disc- as well. <laughs> got to describe what I'm. Have you seen as well that AI artists have realised that audio descriptions for TV shows exist? And they're like, oh. if you copy the audio descriptions for films, it gives you really good AI prompts, so they're not even writing their own fucking prompts. <laughs> I, I love how we've quickly gone from, like, no, there's artistry in writing each prompt by yourself. and like, So you can just with, copy with the prompts from ideas. movie trailers. <laughs> Immediately. It's gone even lazier so fast. But, yeah, of course, the Wiki Weekdays podcast, both Carl and I will pick a wiki to discuss and that could be like you know from wikipedia or just a fan wiki in general There's and many we will yes. delve through them for some fun facts and normally we have been trying to like do the last couple of episodes live but uh this week carl's just you know had something to do on the day that we normally do it live so we're just recording this beforehand in Lucas. in case you know we've got lives would, would you believe it a content creator's got a life <laughs> we don't like form our entire lives around our schedule of like doing a podcast live i'm afraid is there any person more boring than the person whose entire life is their job <laughs> there is no person more boring than when you ask them what they've been up to it's like, well at work it's like but what have you been doing besides work oh well i met always some guys from work for a drink it's like no nah! it's quite funny because yeah when you talk to somebody in person and they never shut up about their job you're like oh, God, why won't this person stop talking about their job? And then when we get asked, like, questions about our job, and we're like, oh, I don't really remember it, it's not that significant. It's like, nope. some, pe- some, some people, not everyone, admittedly, some people, like, give us shit for not caring enough about our job and treating it, like, on this job? pedestal. And it's like, it's weird, because we more get shit for not talking about our job than, than the other way around. Yeah, it's like, you know, we have the um, the Wiki Weekends Discord, which people can follow and find by clicking on the links below, in which you'll find like, a place where you can ask us questions. And just, I think my number one response to questions is like, oh, what was your favourite video you've done? It's like, I don't remember. We've mm-hmm. done 700 of them, and I like, you know, it's a, it was half an hour of my life six years ago. I think it's more like a thousand plus at this point, yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, I'm not going to remember a specific half an hour from seven years ago, I'm sorry. Like, unless, like, you know, it was with, like, a supermodel. <laughs> I'm going to have to get working on it. But, uh, you know, if you do want to join that Discord, the link is, of course, down below. And you can go ask us questions, uh, you know, send us suggestions for possible topics in the future. And you can let us know which wiki won this week. Dueling wikis. Exactly. And that just means, you know, vote for which wiki gives the best discussion and not necessarily which wiki is your favorite topic but um like you know that means of course we have to let people know which wiki won last week which was and according to the official vote call it was elden ring versus missing no and last week my topic elden ring managed Ah. to clinch a victory we need to start like tracking these see who's won the most we do yeah like maybe one day (laughs) one day but yeah, I kind of picked the softball for that one of, well, an Elden Ring trailer is dropping three hours before that we did the podcast. Speaking of softballs, like I, that's what I've got this week. Like, okay. not li- uh, uh, I'm not sure you should be uh, discussing that with us. Maybe go <laughs> to a doctor for that. Like <laughs> Frame it another way, Carl. Frame it another way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Carl, what is your what are your softballs for the week? Well, um, over the weekend, a uh, TV show dropped, specifically the t- the live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. So I Ooh. thought we could talk about The Last Airbender 2010 movie, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan? That's how I pronounce it, because he's got an A in it. People always, say M- people always say M. Night Shyamalan, but his name is spelled S-H-Y-A-M-A-L-A-N, Shyamalan. And that's how yeah. he pronounced it in early interviews. And so you can tell he got sick of correcting Americans. Is that pronounced it just Shyamalan? Yeah, because like, I've, I've only heard Shyamalan. But yeah, that's neither here or there. I do find it very funny that you pick this topic because I've noticed like posts over the past weekend or so since like Netflix have dropped the new version of mm-hmm. the live-action Avatar. Which I watched, people... and it's fine. Yeah, 
It seems you know, that's it. all you can say. It's fine, but also it it's really weird because they expect you to have watched the show because he does this. He does like what I call Game of Thrones like teleportation tech. Do you know oh, like the last no. season of Game of Thrones where just people are teleporting all over the world willy-nilly? They just mention, like, we need to end up here at some point, and then the next scene is them there. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. because this live-action adaptation is, like, 22 episodes of the original show, condensed down to, like, six or eight episodes. I forget how many it was, because me and my friend has watched it in, like, one big binge. Like, they're doing stuff like, they go to an island, and, like, where they're training to battle, and literally they are there for one day. And then mm. the next episode on another island, but they now they all now know how to fight. Oh right, okay. But yeah. obviously it's Netflix. They expect you to binge it, but like there is, but literally this was yesterday, and they're acting like they've undergone months of training. Mm-hmm. Like there's a bit where like you know four or five episodes in, people start talking about the legend of the Avatar and all these like mis- amazing things that they've done. It's like that happened on the other side of the world, and it was yesterday. <laughs> how is this happening? And because I- and it's. It's funny because I'll mention like a minor spoiler for uh, Madam Web, not that a single person cares. No one but cares about Madam Web. We could have done the Madam Web, but no one's wrote the plot on Wikipedia yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, apparently, there's a scene where like uh, Madam Web, Dakota Johnson, like kidnaps three teenage girls and, you know, rescues them, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and like puts them in a jungle. And then they're in like a different state. And on the same day, there is, like, a newspaper article of, like, oh, yeah, these these teenagers have been kidnapped. And it's, like, across state lines on the same day. And there's a newspaper article out yep. about it already. It's... So, okay, just skip over any logic for just plot convenience, okay? And do you know what this is? It's because TV now isn't like it used to be. Like, you know, when the original Avatar series aired, 22 episodes. Where you have a couple of episodes of filler... And during those, it can be, like, you know, understood that, you know... You might think, well, those filler episodes don't really matter. They're called filler, after all. It's like, those are the episodes where you'll see the characters do things like training or practicing, like, their water bending. Like, mm-hmm. you have a thing where, like, Katara, in, like, the live-action show, has one fight scene where she throws, like, the equivalent of throwing a bucket of water on someone. And then the next episode, she's arguing that she is a warrior who deserves to fight on the front lines of that the war that just started. <laughs> it's like, you've had one fight scene! And she's that's... suddenly, like, doing crazy bullshit, but you never saw her practice. That's one thing um, that I have always, like, notably enjoyed about My Hero Academia, is that... You see them training. They will, they will do shots of, like, his, you know, training arcs and stuff like that. But even when it's just... Not specifically a training arc or a tournament arc or anything like that. It can just be bits where it's like, oh, well, this is how all of the different students are trying to improve their powers. And then it'll tell you, like, oh, but it's, and now it's a month later. Yep. Or now well, it's like a few weeks later and they've all been training up their powers using, like, these specific techniques. And that's the problem with this show because, obviously, it's only a handful of episodes. Mm-hmm. Everything has been truncated, including all their training. So you go, like, it, it, it literally... Like the, the the Kyoshi Island like stuff. It's like a couple episodes of the show, but in this, it's like it literally is half of an episode. And mm-hmm. the the character is there for one day. They are there for literally <laughs> one day because they arrive and then the enemy around they leave. So they're one day. The character in it undergoes one day of training with the Kyoshi warriors and is suddenly fighting on par with them. It's like you've had less. And the thing is, the training arc is he does three moves from one of their forms, kisses the girl, and now he's fighting as good as them. Oh man! It's, it's almost like they should have had like a couple of episodes here and just had like you know some fun adventures and running around the thing, so you can like in your head infer that they were there for a couple of months or a couple of weeks. Exactly. Like a boot camp. You don't need to detail it all out and show it all, but at least like infer some amount of time passing where they're learning this and training and stuff. Yeah, like the series, like the live action one, genuinely feels like it takes place over the course of a week. <laughs> and in that week, the world just ends up on the brink of war, and everyone learns how to master the elements, even though they never try. Anyway, the film is American action adventure fantasy film, written, co produced, and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, produced by Paramount Pictures, Nickelodeon Movies, Blinding Edge Pictures, and the Kennedy Marshall Company, distributed by Paramount. Based on book one, Water, of the Nickelodeon animated television series Avatar The Last Airbender. And we don't really need to tell the plot because the plot is like, this is the same story we've had three times and it's told mm. best by the fucking cartoon. And Carl, it's yes. safe to say that this film 
had a reputation for a long time now as like basically one of the worst anime live adaptations, right? It says right here, and someone's going to correct, like Avatar The Last Anime is not anime. It is heavily inspired by it. Of course, like yeah. But yes, it says here that it is one of the worst films of all time. Or it's considered to be, at least critically. And it's really funny because I was mentioned earlier, like, oh, over the past weekend, I've seen people talking and posting about like Avatar, the, the Netflix show. Yep, and people are now sitting here and going like, "Oh, remember like how much better the 2010 like live Every action time. Avatar was compared Every time. to this shit?" And it's like, "Oh, you!" F- I there was one time I thought that this might not occur of like notably one of the just the worst adaptations of all time. Yep, and even then, people are like, "Man, I miss the good old days of the M Night Shyamalan." <laughs> It, it is the Star Wars problem of every time they release a new Star Wars movie, that becomes the worst Star Wars movie ever. And the mm-hmm. Star Wars movie released two movies before that, suddenly it's like maybe we're too harsh judging it. Or like, yeah. oh, maybe just, you know, just tempers get, you know, tempered out I over gen- time. I, I never thought it would happen with that <laughs> Avatar movie that we're talking about today. The only thing I can say about, like, you know, the live action, the movie, as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, the, the series is that at least the movie had a budget. Now, this show, obviously, you look at it, it's money is just burning on screen. Mm. Money is burning on screen. But there's a problem because almost every single background is CGI. Mm-hmm. And there's something I, I pointed out to a friend of mine, like the one I watched it with, because they're not too clued in on like, filmmaking techniques. And they were saying, why does this look weird? And I pointed out that every single shot is filmed with the shallowest depth of field imaginable. So like, people right. wonder what we mean by if you're watching like mine and Lucas' screen right now, you'll mm-hmm. notice that my background is a bit clearer than Lucas's because I'm filming this on like the bog standard, like you know, 1080p webcam. Lucas is filming it on like a decent camera, which has a sh- like you notice that Lucas's background is a little bit blurry. Mine's a bit clearer. Yeah, it's not you know perfect. I'd like it to be blurrier and a bit mm-hmm. more of a difference, but there is a, a slight difference in detail between what you can see here and what you can see in the background, yeah. And the idea with a, a shallow depth of field is to focus on, like, you know, whatever's in the foreground, usually, like, you know, a, a character speaking or something like that. But because, obviously, the backgrounds are CGI and they don't want to, like, you know, put too much detail into them, every single conversation is just extreme, extreme shallow depth of field and the background's blurry. And I pointed out to my friend, I went, that's because the backgrounds are animated. I went, what do you mean? I went, there's a scene in a forest. I went... Look at that forest behind them. It's literally not moving. It is oh, not moving. There's, there's, no. not, there's not a single leaf that's moving in a breeze because it's all blurry and they don't expect to see it. But you can see that it's literally just a static image. And it's like, we did better green screen work back when we did Fact Fiend. <laughs> and there's very obviously as well, like some really bad like effects. Like there's a bit where like one of the characters stands up and their head moves on like like an apple on a stick. Oh. And it's like, wait, what's that? And it's like that's because that's the actress wasn't there. They CGI'd her head onto a martial artist. And, and just little uh, things like that of like at least in the live action movie, they actually got sets built. No, like they, they did a lot of that on they location. Did a lot of C- but it do- like that's the problem with this movie is it, it we had a massive budget, but a lot of those scenes that they were like on location for, I believe, or at least had Greenland, sets for, yeah. were like it looks like it could be a set or CGI. But like, say, like at least like they built something. There's like no, they yes. did it on location. They built sets and stuff. But mm-hmm. the reason why is because the reason why it's so frustrating is that like one thing that's great about the show is that it's heavily inspired by martial arts, and I can't remember mm-hmm. the top of my head what specific martial art informs which style of like bending. But, like, you know, each bending style, fire, water, earth, and wind, is based on a traditional Asian martial art. And uh, for that reason, during fight scenes, the camera zooms out. Do you like in a Jackie Chan movie? Where yeah, it zooms yeah. out so you can see the full cat, like, you see the, the actor's full body as they do movements. Every fight scene in Avatar The Last Seven, the live action TV show, is framed from like where we're framed right now. So you're watching like martial arts fight scenes where you can't see the character's legs, but they're throwing kicks. And it's like, again, (laughs) because they either didn't have the choreography skill to get the actor to actually do the martial arts, even though all the actors could do the martial arts, or they didn't have the budget to make the backgrounds look good. So they just frame it super close up so they don't have to make the backgrounds look detailed. And as a result, all the fight scenes look fucking terrible. And they're all as well, all in slow motion. Every single fight scene is in slow motion. 
that's one thing where Netflix part like a teaser that I saw, and it was just five seconds of the slowest earth bending I've ever seen. Was, this doesn't do a good job and that's of showcasing like, this slow show motion, at all. I have no issue with it. I, you know, the reason it's slow motion is to highlight a super cool moment or like you know put emphasis on something. Like drop in the yeah. Matrix. They only put slow motion in when it's like you know one of the most dramatic moments of the film. They don't put it in like, every fucking fight scene. Slow motion is some of the the coolest things yes. in filmmaking, like when it's utilized correctly. It should be used for emphasis, but every single fight scene is just slow motion people <laughs> punching. It's like these are supposed to be like like bending is like an extension of martial arts. Like when they're punch, it's like just imagine someone throwing a punch, but instead of like the fist, it's just a mountain sized piece of rock. It says here, Cole, uh, directed by Zack Snyder. No, it's <laughs> it's not. <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's just it's everything. Uh, everything's in slow motion, and it looks terrible. Yeah. And it's like just the fact that like there's obviously so much money being spent, and they've like slavishly recreated like scenes and moments from the show. But like the CGI backgrounds don't move. Like they're in a forest, and you can tell the forest is not moving <sighs> because it's not a real forest. And it's like, oh, it looks terrible. And, and as um, soon as you notice it, it's impossible not to notice. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, I do want to just point idea. out. Oh, go, go for it. Um, just like I was curious myself, because I've heard that the fighting styles are based on, um, you know, actual traditional fighting styles. And, yes. Uh, it says here that, like, water bending um, is formed over Tai Chi. Tai Chi, uh, yes. And, like, slow moving. And they even say, like, yeah. yeah. It's like slower defensive style. That's all about, like, you know, like deep control of your body and your breathing, which they incorporate into the style. It's like, oh! Yeah, it says here, like, it's taken from the, the fluidity, connectivity, and adapt to the adaptability of, of Tai it. Chi. And then um, we've got Hungar for the basis of earth bending. Yeah, which is uh, characterized by, like, short, snappy movements, like stomps, like short punches and stuff, which are befits rock of a very blunt to the point style mm -hmm. and then uh the northern shaolin system forms the basis of fire bending mm -hmm. you know like um, fluid adaptable but also like you know aggressive with flourishes much like fire and then um i don't know how to pronounce this but uh bagwazang i want to say forms the basis of air bending and Which then a, a, again a softer martial art the difference like Soft and hard martial arts, like soft ones, like defensive styles, like Tai Chi. Or is it, is it Baji Quan that you're looking at? Don't Maybe that's that. how it's pronounced. I, I was going off just like, you know, spelling out phonetically in my head. Mm. Um, and then I don't know what this is, but there was uh, also pro bending, which is inspired by uh, aerial acrobatic martial arts. Mm. Which is that thing about, I, yeah. It's, it's I don't very, know what very, pro like, bending is, but yeah. <laughs> it, it's um, in like um, uh, Legend of Korra, where like, people fight oh, professionally. Okay. So it's like a. a, a it's more stylish. Okay. And that's it. They went, put a lot of effort into like replicating these martial arts styles in the show. And like the mm -hmm. idea of like each form of fighting is like, you know, just differentiated by the style. Like none are better than the others. And some of them even yeah. incorporate stuff from the other ones. Like the character of Toph, because she's blind, she never learned to fight formally. She learns to fight from the Badger Moles, who are the original <laughs> Earthbenders. So she has a completely unique style because she learned basically like, you know, a proto form of it mm -hmm. and her fighting i forget what fighting style like she has but it's like they say it's like one of the earliest forms of martial arts to represent like you know, she basically learned this ancient form that no one oh, else knows cool. how to do yeah and like I, I guess it's a good time to ask carl just yes if you could pick one of the four bending powers like which which earth form bending. would you pick earth bender it's so broken because <laughs> like i've heard uh, you know again i've admitted before like, i've seen lots of clips and seen episodes here and there but i've never sat down and watched the entire thing but when someone goes like oh but you can just blood bend with water i'm like that sounds pretty sick and yep. <sighs> so does earth and metal bending it's just one of those things where like it's such a great show for the thing we always talk about is interesting applications of like powers mm -hmm. and that's what all of avatar is about of like okay i control yeah. the earth and that's like you have the great moment with Toph, where she controls the earth and they lock her in a metal cage so you're in a metal cage so you can't you can't there's no earth in there. And she goes, actually, there is. There's trace amount. Like, no metal is 100% pure. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be some impurities in there, and I can bend the impurities. And they have this, like, <laughs> great scene where she, like, you know, just visualizes where all, of, like, the earth is inside of the metal cage that she's in and just punches her way out. I still just love the um, the thing I saw mentioned. of like, 
Oh, you know that scene where like Toph just like jumps into the metal door and forms yeah, like the front armor. flips through, turns into an armor costume, and kicks the fuck out of five people at once. But like these firebenders don't even know that metal bending exists. Yep. And then all of a sudden, a small girl just dives through and becomes just this metal arm man. You, you forgot <laughs> as well the best line where it's like Toph. Did I ever tell you how cool it is that you invented metal bending? It's like yeah, but you could say it more. <laughs> that's always the thing it's like I, I love the show for that and obviously the fight scenes are great and like you mentioned that moment there that happens in like two or three seconds it's like Toph mm-hmm. dives into the door front flips through in the metal and they don't put it in super fucking slow motion to show you how it works they just they treat the audience as like you know intelligent enough to understand the mechanics of how what she just did would work because you've watched the whole show and it's a natural evolution of what she's already done so far mm-hmm in the show, that'd be like oh, 100% in slow mo. It'd be like the Iron Man suit up moment of like five straight minutes of her putting it on. And the fight's gonna be one second long. Oh, God. But, Carl, let's get back to the actual like, M. Night Shyamalan movie, shall we? What's the development? So, on January 8th, 2007, Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon Movies announced that they had signed M. Night Shyamalan to write, direct, and produce a trilogy of live action films based on The Last Airbender. The first of these films would be a faithful adaptation of the main character's adventures in book one, Water. And here's what makes it so sad. So, according to an interview with the co-creators in SFX magazine, Shyamalan came across Avatar while his, when his daughter wanted to be Katara for Halloween. Intrigued, Shyamalan mm. researched and watched the series with his family. Watching Avatar has become a family event in my house, he would later say. So we are looking forward to how the story develops in season three. Once I saw the amazing world that Mike and Brian, the original creators of the series, created, I knew it would make a great feature film. He noted that he was attracted to the spiritual and martial arts influences of the show. I mean, yeah, fair enough, but, you know, when I watch clips of that movie and all the fight scenes and stuff, none of it actually looks like it's any form of martial arts. Nope, and the re- and the, the bit that everyone always points out is the earthbenders do, like, this whole, like, catter of, like, sequences, and they throw a punch, and then a rock floats at one mile an hour across the screen. <laughs> yeah. And, like, if you go watch the show, it's like, the rock should be moving as fast as you throw the punch. That's that's why it's so terrifying. Like you know, when Toph stomps on the ground, the mm-hmm. speed with which she stomps on the ground is the speed with which like the pillar of earth erupts from beneath your own feet. Yeah, and the way that it's shown in the cartoon is that most of those actions are nigh instantaneous. Yep, and that's what makes it so dangerous. It's like it's like martial arts, like the speed with which you throw a, a master martial artist throwing a punch, the same speed with which a master bender, which is still funny to me because like yeah, just, it's in Britain like just. For clarification, in Britain, bender is a euphemism for being gay. It's a, I mean, probably not a nice way of saying it's it. It's a pejorative, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And f- fun fact about this movie, to um, they didn't realise that when marketing it over here, and they just put a big massive like ad in one of the papers just saying, are you a bender? Of course they did. Of yeah. course they did. It's, it's hilarious. But... <sighs> In a 2004 interview, uh, Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konisdiko... Oh, try again. Brian Konitsko... So I pronounced his name incorrectly, I apologize. Um, noted that the project was given the go-ahead without their approval. And when they tried to provide input at all, it all got pushed to the wayside. Kanitsko added further that A, we didn't want it to be done at all. Before anyone was attached, we didn't want it. And then if it was going to be done, we wanted to do it, but they weren't going to let us. And C, when they were going to attach night, we just thought, well, this is what we've been dealt. We'll just offer help when it's asked. And if it's not, we'll stay out of the way. That's so, a great way to enter the project, right? Yeah, so M. Night Shyamalan just immediately just went, I don't want to listen to input from the original creators of the universe. Yay. And the same thing happened with the live-action TV show where they again got edged out when they tried to provide feedback on um, uh, stuff that they were doing. You'd just give up, wouldn't you? You yeah. really would. It's, it's happened to them twice. Yeah. Let's say there's some decent bits of the thing, but it's just... It's, all I was thinking when I was watching it with our friend who'd not seen the original show is, what I want you to do after this is just go watch the show because all it's doing is giving you a worse version of it. Mm-hmm. This is just a worse version of what already exists and the original version is like got more detail, the fight scenes look better, the storytelling's better. And it's um, the exact kind of discussion that I was having when the One Piece Netflix show came out mm-hmm. is that I understand that it's um, quite a useful tool to try and get people in the foot, like, you know, get the foot in the door of anime watching. Yep. However, if you're discussing the comparison between 
One Piece the anime slash manga or One Piece the like live action. I know the the differences between the anime and manga can be a completely different discussion. Of course, but, yes. Um, just comparing, you know, anime and manga to the live action. It is just inherently worse in almost every single way, in the exact just, same just, way that you were saying about. You just not got enough time. Yeah. yeah, there's just not enough time. And yes, again, it's useful <clears throat> for people on Netflix who don't watch anime to get introduced into the world of One Piece, for example, and go. Yeah, that's it. I see. Oh, it's basically I just a two hundred million dollar trailer. Mm hmm. And for watching they can One Piece. get attached to it and go watch the better version of it, but. Almost everything, apart from some people might not like that, you know, One Piece and Avatar are in 4.3 and not in full widescreen yeah. HD because they're a bit older, but other than like... maybe that complaint, they are just better in every way. Or they might not like it because it's a cartoon, because that's a thing mm -hmm. that people do. But it says yeah. here that Brad Gray, one of the producers, said that despite the director's career being inconsistent, which I think is the most diplomatic way to refer to M. Night Shyamalan's career, Right. And I always yeah, bring this sure. up with one of my favourite, like, just Hollywood tripping over its own dick moments is when I think it was The Hollywood Reporter or some other trade magazine had, like, a full-page spread on M. Night Shyamalan where on the cover of the magazine it just says, The Next Spielberg? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> and and it's I like, guess maybe that was after, maybe, like, Sixth Sense. That was after The Sixth Sense, but, what, but before stuff like The Village or and signs. signs. Yeah, yeah. And Avatar. And Avatar. Don't forget Devil. Don't oh, forget I didn't Devil. even know Devil was a movie. Devil's like know. the one where they're all in an elevator. And he didn't have the balls to call it the Devilator. <laughs> or like The Cove. I think it's called The Beach. That's the thing. He's got interesting ideas, beach, but he's just yeah. not a good filmmaker. And I think, yeah, everyone always obviously talks about the, the M. Night Shyamalan plot twist as being the big reason that his films are notable, but as far as I'm aware, there's more notable bad films and plot twists than there are good ones. And the problem with a plot twist as well is it's like it completely ruins the movie on a rewatch. For mm -hmm. example, like The Sixth Sense. If Once you know the plot twist that Bruce Willis is already dead, spoilers for a 15-year-old movie. If you watch that movie knowing that, it completely ruins everything because it makes zero sense. It makes there's zero a... sense that Bruce Willis is dead. It was like, my wife won't talk to me. All she does <laughs> is cry. It's like, did you not have a conversation with anyone? Do you not like go to the store oh. and like buy some milk? Do you not realize why he's not taking a shit in four weeks? It's like nobody is talking to you at all. Nobody is acknowledging your existence. But, but also, like the logic of the universe breaks down because it's like, oh, like Haley Joel Osment is going to see a therapist. It's like, wait a minute, no, he's not because his therapist is dead, which means that his parents just watch their like withdrawn, distraught child just get progressively more withdrawn, <laughs> distraught, and never try to help him. There's one line in It's Always Sunny that always sends me of just when they're talking about the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. Charlie's like, oh man, yeah. And then when you realise that the ghost was Bruce Willis all along and that that was the... <laughs> and I don't know why. It's just like the way he delivers that line, it always just gets me. It's Yeah, it's the thing. Oh. It's a great twist, but if you actually stop to think about the logic of the universe they've just built, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing in it. As a result, the film is basically a one and done. It has, mm -hmm. it should have no lasting cultural impact beyond that twist because you can't go back and rewatch that film. But don't forget, so oh man, Unbreakable. We also did Unbreakable, where like because oh, he's so obsessed with the right, twist, yeah. he puts the twist at the end. And the, tw and the thing is, I contend Unbreakable could have been one of the best movies ever if they put the twist in the fucking middle. And Unbreakable, right. if anyone hasn't watched it, is a film starring Bruce Willis where the twist is he's a superhero who doesn't know he's got superpowers. But they put it in right at the end. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, years and years later, they, they did glass. A Split and then Glass. They did Split, which is yeah. great. So, you know, that's probably one of his better movies, but it's mostly carried by James McAvoy's fault. And then they do Glass, which is terrible because I'm, I'm going to fucking spoil it because it sucks. They kill Bruce Willis's <laughs> character in the first 10 minutes. I thought he was unkillable. I thought that no, was the they point. drown him in a puddle because water saps his powers. So they just they and they literally walk up to Bruce Willis and just push his head down into a puddle and he drowns, and that's it. <laughs> 20, Speaking of one piece. Twenty years of build up. Twenty <laughs> years of build up, and they just put Bruce Willis's head in a puddle and kill him. But I guess that they were just leaning on the James McAvoy of it all instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking <sighs> hell. I like I've not 
seen that series of films or that trilogy. Of I films. would not recommend it. Unbreakable is a fantastic movie, especially if you watch all the deleted scenes. Mm-hmm. There's like the deleted scenes that like flesh out the universe a little bit better, and they actually lean more into him having superpowers more than they did in eventually. I got spoiled on the 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 plot twist that he had superpowers this entire time before I ever went round to watching that movie. So. I just want, well, if that's the selling point of the movie, what's the fucking point? And then he never uses superpowers. Yeah. So it's like a superhero movie where he never actually does anything superhuman. Because they want to save it for a sequel <laughs> that never got made. It did, did get, it did. And then it did, and then they just kill off. It's, it's, <laughs> but back to Avatar. Casting. Shia Malan originally offered the roles of Aang to Noah Ringer, Sokka to Jackson Rathbone, Katara to Nicola Peltz, and Zuko to Jesse McCartney. And Lucas, you may have noticed something about a couple of the names on that list. Hmm. Like, I mean, so, they all sound American as shit. They all sound American as shit, yeah. And where is Avatar, the last airbender, set? Or at least where, what is the setting inspired by? We just want to draw the martial believe, arts and stuff? Yeah, I believe it is, like, vaguely inspired by Eastern Asian culture. Yes, and, like, the waterbending tribes and Pacifics are uh, more inspired by Inuit culture. Right, okay. So it's like, you know, a Again, I've between... not watched the show, so... So indigenous cultures and East Asian cultures, like, you know, are kind of, it's like weird hodgepodge of, well, not weird, but, you know, a hodgepodge of them created, like, you know, paying homage and respect to all of them. Mm-hmm. Culmination of them all, like, mixed together, yeah. Yeah, it says here that Shyamalan noted that he did not want to make the movie without Nicola Peltz, um, saying that I said that only one, I have said that only once in my career, and that was when I met Haley John Osman for The Sixth Sense. In February 2009, Dev Patel replaced Jesse McCartney, whose tour dates conflicted with a boot camp schedule for cast to train in martial arts. And that's what I'll say about the new live action one of they did hire Asian actors who can do martial arts. Although I did see there's some like some people complaining about the, the casting of soccer and I'm um, like oh, the, not the being indigenous soccer. or something like that. I'm, it's because the, act- the actor who plays soccer just looks like a fucking weeb. I think it was something to do with like the background or something. Yeah, that, like, as well, yeah. he's just he's a really like people pointed out he looks like the fake soccer from like an episode of the show <laughs> where they have a fake one. He looks more like him than the actual character. But you know, speaking of which, we have uh, some other characters: Catherine Horton playing Grand Grand, the mother of Katara Soccer; Seychelles Gabriel playing Princess Yu. Um, uh, soccer's prin- um, a love interest of Soccer and the Prince of the Northern Water Tribe. Isaac Jin Solstein playing an earthbending boy. Comedian Asif Mandavi playing Commander Zhao. Cliff Curtis as Fire Lord Ozai. And Cliff Curtis is one of those actors where he's probably one of the actors who've got the weirdest like um, uh, resumes of anyone else. Because I'm just going to look. I'm pretty sure he's from... Yes, he's from New Zealand. So he is of um... Maori descent. But he himself has noted that because I'm like Maori, I'm like just vaguely ethnic, at least to Americans. They don't know what Maori is. Mm-hmm. So they just see me and I'm like, you know, I've got brown skin. I look kind of ethnic. So he has played everything from like Arabs to Asian people, depending on what right. the role needs of him. Isn't it similar with uh, jean Colo Esposito that keeps me in like, people keep mistaking my ethnicity and casting me for the wrong roles. But yep. like, I guess I'm just going to take them because I'm getting paid. But like... Yep. People just keep completely misunderstanding my ethnicity. We have that. We have a quote from Cliff Curtis here. When asked about being, and I quote, an all-purpose ethnic actor, he has said, "It has been a real advantage. I love being ethnic. I love the color of my skin. There are limitations in the business. That's a reality. But I've been given such wonderful opportunities. And basically, just do you need a guy who looks vaguely foreign? Get Cliff Curtis. I mean, I, look, I I get hiring people of the correct backgrounds, but. You can't be my uh, the actor, I guess, of just like go get your bag. But... Well, that, that's this thing of like you know, he goes like he even says in his quote there of like you know I'm a brown guy in Hollywood. I'm not gonna get. I just take what I'm offered. Mm-hmm. It, it, when they like they give him like you say, oh, so can you play an Arab guy? And he's like, yeah, D- probably you shouldn't. Think... But if you're gonna pay me, reminds me a little bit of when they made um, the um, the reboot of um, Red Dawn where originally um, the reboot was going to be China um, attacking mainland US, but then they didn't want to get to get boycotted in China. So they changed all of the flags in the film to be from North Korea, but they still didn't, they didn't hire any Korean actors. They just <laughs> used all the same Chinese and Chinese-American actors. And like a behind-the-scenes quote is of like, no one cares. No one's going to mm. notice. And it's like, yeah, I guess. Somebody noticed, though. <laughs> 
And I do wonder what it would be like. I've, I've always said I would love to be like a fly on the wall for one of these discussions of like one of these actors when they go up to and talk to like a Cliff, Cliff Curtis, for example. I'd love to be a fly on the wall during one of his auditions. And then say, okay, so you're auditioning for like, you know, terrorist number three. Um, can you do like, you know, a vaguely, like, you know, um, uh, Arab accent? It's like, I can, but you know, I'm not Arab, right? I'm from New mm. Zealand. And they're like, ah, it's fine. And, yeah, and like the, you know, we're stereotyping all of this for the sake of the discussion being like, this is what we imagine those, you know, casting well, calls. Well, are like. We literally know it's like, and I hate to use this as an example, but it's the only one that springs to mind immediately is um, Father Ted. So, you know, like known shithead Graham Linehan on the director's commentary for an episode. They have the yeah. famous Father Ted being accused of being racist episode. You're like, I'm who are you a racist mm-hmm. now, Father? Um, there's an actor they got on that who's like this Chinese guy. Like he's he's English, but you know, he's of Chinese descent. And mm-hmm. they said when they cast him, they were really awkwardly like, can you be more... Um... And the guy just like, he's used to it because you act more Chinese. And said, like, yeah, mm-hmm. can you? And he goes, of course I can, yeah. Like, don't don't worry, I'm used to this. And I was like, fuck you yeah, out. You, you hear those stories a lot of just, you know, casting directors just turn around to, to somebody and being like, can you be more of like X background and it's like what you mean is can i just lean into the stereotype harder got yeah. it okay and i just great. like remember when they were talking they were in the director's commentary they talk about casting that actor and said he was fine with it but he's just like I, they had to walk over to him and go yeah can you be uh for this scene we need you to be a bit more a, a, a bit more anyway a bit more chinese is that what you want okay yeah i can do that mm-hmm it's, oh, but speaking of which, casting controversy. The casting of white actors in the East Asian and Inuit-influenced Avatar universe, as well as the fact that the casting of the heroes and villains seem to be racially backwards from the show, triggered negative reactions from fans marked by accusations of racism, a letter-writing campaign, and various protests. Because that's the thing as well, of like, it's all white people playing Team Avatar, but all the bad guys in the Fire Nation are like um, uh, brown people. Oh, fuck. And it's really so, like, weird. Even when they're miscasting... They're still like fitting into just oh well, people of different colored skin are the bad people. It's like, what makes it oh. even worse though is is like as mentioned, M Night Shyamalan's reasoning for wanting to make the film is that his daughter wanted to dress like Katara, and then like he's got an interview with him later saying, "I only my only casting goal for Katara was a white woman. I could vis- I could envision nobody else playing Katara but a white woman." It's like that's the character your daughter wanted to dress as. Yes. <laughs> And it's like, how does he square those two things in his head? Mm-hmm. It's wild, isn't it? Like, does he have to turn around to his daughter and be like, sorry, I could have made it so that you see yourself in this character, but I had to make sure that audiences were appealed to more. Like, it's, what? It's, it's so weird. And we have here, and that's, like, you know, what Hollywood imagines is audience appeal more. And we have here, after a casting call, specifically looking for Caucasians, and I quote, other ethnicities. So the casting calls like we want white people and any fucker anyone else. else. <laughs> just, 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 think, just the fact like they had a casting call that said we want white people and any other ethnicities. It's like that just sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. We don't really. Oh. We've got a quote from Shyamalan here. Ultimately, this movie and then the three movies will be the most culturally diverse tentpole movies ever released. To period. To reassure critics, further Paramore provided a statement about the casting choices. The movie has 23 credited speaking roles, more than half of which feature Asian, Pan-Asian, uh, actors of Korean, Japanese, and Indian descent. The filmmaker's interpretation reflects the myriad of qualities that have made this series a global phenomenon. And that is quite a wide like brush that you're using there. I wonder how many specifically are like Eastern Asian or Inuit casting. Yeah. And how well, many of those like, are main... as you say, most of the inspiration comes from. And how many of those are main characters? Yes, exactly. Not yeah. just, well, this person has like a back, you know, a little role in the background or something. They say one line. But Lucas, we continue. Shyamalan comment on the issues regarding fans' perception of the casting. And this is one I remember because we did a fact theme video on this with my ex, who is Japanese. <laughs> so she was like taking right. history. Anime is based on ambiguous facial features. It's meant to be interpretive. It's meant to be inclusive of all races, and you can see yourself in these characters. This is a multicultural movie. I'm going to make it even more multicultural in my approach to casting. And obviously we mentioned like it's technically classified as like a cartoon and not an anime. Mm, but it's, it's anime inspired. And I'll, I'll Japan, see if I can yeah. like paraphrase uh, my ex here when she like just explained this to me of. No... No, it's not. 
anime characters are absolutely written to be Asian. It's just that people, Asian people, like Japanese people's interpretation of themselves is different to what other people would have. Mm-hmm. Like the features that they would ascribe to be Asian are different to the features that we would describe to them. Because I think, um, again, bringing up My Hero, they recently, like, I think it might have been Netflix, it might have been something else that had, like, a casting for live action, if I remember rightly, and it was like, we're going to get, like, an all-American cast. And it's like, <laughs> but it's a, a school in Japan, Japan where not only is it, like, a, a Japanese school and they make a point about, like, going to several different Japanese cities in the show, also a massive part of the characterization of one of the main characters, All Might, is that he's an American living yep. in Japan as a hero. Yep. And like, fuck it, make them all American. Doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's only like, like, oh, like Akira, isn't it? We talked about Akira before. Oh, where yeah. like they were, there's, For years, they tried to do that, like, Akira um, American reboot, and they were going to cast white people as the characters from Akira, but then not change the name. So you're going to have, like, mm-hmm. Michael Fassbender playing Tetsuo <laughs> Shima. It's like... Do you not see like Michael Fassbender in the the role of a role of a lifetime? I'm Tetsuo. pretty sure that like Irish people and Japanese people are basically the same call, right? That that's what makes it so fucking funny. It's like the Airbender thing of like they're all like, it's it's so obviously inspired by Inuit culture. Like you're not going to cast any indigenous people to play these roles. Like no, mm. like, it was like Lucas. It was obviously ambiguously written so you could see white people here in this. Obviously inspired by indigenous culture show. And that was a shout out to uh, One Piece, where they'd made such an effort with the casting of, okay, a lot of people assume because uh, One Piece is an anime that, oh, well, all of the char- the main cast must all have just been like Japanese people then or Japanese inspired. And Oda has in the past sat down and gone, like, no, Luffy would be uh, Brazilian and etc. etc. And they actually went to the effort of casting a lot of people from different ethnicities and they didn't for every character but mm-hmm. they made an effort at least to like get some people cast of the right ethnicities not just make them all american or make them all japanese it's just that hilarious thing off though just m night Shyamalan being like they, they have ambiguous facial features it's like mm. there was obviously no intention from the original creators to portray one race or another and then like the original creators have like written essays on like how every like individual part of their universe is directly inspired and has a real world parallel to our own wild because well, like Lucas, you he... mentioned that um there's like loads of different islands that they go to i presume yep. like different islands and tribes and stuff all have specific actual like real life inspirations yeah i, I wouldn't know them off the top of my head but i think one is yeah, like kiyoshi course. island i believe is it's like roughly inspired by like okinawa i want to mm-hmm. say but like, again it's been a while since I watched the show, and even longer since I like, read up on it. But yeah, at the very least, like it's definitely not. They're not all meant to be white. That's the one <laughs> thing. The one thing that we know that you can definitively say. We have here, Lucas. We have a quote from Jackson Rathborn, who dismissed complaints, saying, "And I quote: I think it's one of those things where if I pull my hair up, shave the sides, and definitely need a tan, it's one of those things where hopefully the audience will suspend their disbelief a little." That is his defense for being cast to play an indigenous character. Like, if I just get a bit of a tan and shave the sides of my head, you'll buy it, right? And that that's a weird position to be put in as an actor, I get, because... But you, you know, don't say but, like, that. You don't say that. Because, you know, you could turn around and be like, look, I acknowledge that there's been, like, you know, some controversy with the casting, but, hey, I'm just here to get paid and I got casted Go by these people. Go talk to but- Curtis. Yeah, don't talk like, to Cliff Curtis. He'll tell you what to say. Don't turn around and be like, I'm pretty sure it's fine if I just shave my head a bit. If I just shave the sides of my head and put get a tan, no one's going to know. Nope. nope. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's that thing of like, you could just see him putting like the seasoning on his foot and shoving it into his mouth. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, it's the, the classic, like, Scarlett Johansson of, like, I could be a tree. I could play any race that I want, and then, like, five minutes later, she's walking it back. Yeah, a publicist is just, nope, 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 don't do that. And then we have just, like, you know, reception. So, Lucas, we have reception from, like, critics, but we know it was bad. But we have the crew responses. So, 
Shyamalan argued that his style and art form of storytelling resulted in the negative reviews of the film and compared it to asking a painter to change to a different style, saying, and I quote, I bring as much integrity to the table as humanly possible. It must be a language thing in terms of a particular accent, a storytelling accent. I can only see it this certain way and I don't know how to think in another language. These are exactly the visions that are in my head. I don't know how to adjust it without being me. Basically, just I made the film that I wanted to and ignored everybody else, and it sucked. So they, everybody but um, everybody but yeah. me must be wrong. It's sure, the, it's the principal skin of me, isn't it? Like, is it Which one? literally every single person who's criticizing this is wrong, or is it me? No, <laughs> everybody else must be wrong. The original creators of the thing are telling me that it sucks. What's the issue? They just don't understand my style. Mm-hmm. Shyamalan also addressed criticisms about the barely 90-minute runtime of the film, which was considered bizarre, given that it had to condense a 20-episode TV season into a single film, and it's far shorter than is typical for a summer blockbuster. Shyamalan's response was that all of his previous films were 90 minutes long, and as a result, (laughs) his instinct was for the pacing of the film to be edited down to a tight 90 minutes. I thought that, like, there was some weird thing with this film of like Shyamalan wanted to make it like hours and hours long and nope. they got loads of pushback or something. Nope, it's that like he wanted to make it 90 minutes long and they had to basically fix it in the edit as it says here. This short this short runtime indirectly led to other problems with multiple which multiple critics objected to. Characters frequently resorting to giving long speeches of exposition to summarize entire scenes that were cut for time and a running voiceover commentary by Katara was added in in post which she summarizes the entire subplot. So there's subplots that don't get shown because they got cut by Shyamalan that they then had to fix in post by having a um, recurring narration. Yeah, because doesn't it as well, like, open with a Star Wars text crawl or something? Mm Mm-hmm. And it's just like, here's what you need to know. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. Um, Dev Patel expressed regret and dislike for his role and experience with the film. At a 2016 Actors Roundtable with The Hollywood Reporter while promoting the film Lion during Oscar contender season, he said, and I quote, I don't know what I would like to play, but I know what I'm afraid of playing, those big studio movies. After Slumdog Millionaire, I did a film that was not well received at all, Avatar The Last Airbender. The budget for Slumdog was like the budget of craft services for this movie. Yeah, and... I mean, you can probably see why he's been in smaller projects like uh, The Green Knight and stuff like that instead of just... Just absolutely just go, killing it. Yeah, be act really fucking well in this really, like, you know, lesser-known movie that kicks ass rather than go and do another fucking Avatar movie. Mate, I'm all down for Monkey King, which is just like Indian John Wick. Oh, I've not heard of it. Hell yeah, damn it. Like, uh, it was Jordan Peele. Oh, right. Uh, just was like, hey, this film fucking whips ass. Let's like give, like just put it on Netflix. Let's go. Oh, okay. I thought you were like Jordan Peele made this. I was like, I've never heard of this one. No, he just thought it was awesome, so he helped to get a wider distribution. Because it's just like Indian John Wick, because Dev Patel has like, like a third Dan black belt in Taekwondo or something. And he's like nice. a really good martial artist. It, uh, it's funny because part of me still in my head is like, oh yeah, Dev Patel, like the awkward guy in Misfits. Yep. And he's like, no, he's just kicking absolute ass. It's great. In a Q&A session on Reddit with Dante Basco, the original voice actor for Prince Zuko, when asked what he thought of the last Airbender film, he responded saying that the show's original creators told him not to see it. <laughs> they were invited to the premiere. And imagine going to the premiere and just and sitting there and like, like, nope. Axe it. Oh, I also uh, did my classic thing of mistaking Misfits and Skins because... Oh, yeah, similar yeah, show. He was in Skins, not Misfits, but yeah, I always I get say, I remember him being in Skins, but he might have been in Misfits as well because like they kind of had all the same actors in them. <laughs> but I absolutely, though, just love that quote from um, like Shyamalan when it comes to that of just, hey, like, what was I supposed to do? I just created the film as I saw it in my head. It's everyone else's <laughs> fault that they didn't get it. It's like, that's fine when you're writing and directing your own movie. It's an adaptation. And like, and you know, you yourself are so we talked before about you know adaptations don't necessarily need to perfectly emulate or show mm-hmm. everything from a source material. But when there's like a huge inbuilt fan base that you're trying to appeal to, maybe the, you the, should. The purpose of this movie was to give a live action like recreation of mm-hmm. the TV show. It wasn't there to 
be a new twist or a commentary or anything like that. It was it just wasn't like you know a very just... poorly done recreation of the the cartoon. Yeah. And that's all you can say about it. Same as like the live action TV show. It is just they have slavishly recreated scenes from the show, and they just look worse. And uh, you know, I watched the I think it was the original trailer and saw like the uh, the big flying yak and yeah, stuff like that. Sky thought, them. Yeah, the sky bison, and that's it. And I thought, yeah, like that looks really cool, and they've recreated some of the elements really well. And then it turns out, no, just just pray, Avatar fans, that the follow up thing that they're make, like making, the, like, like the movie, an that's animated a... follow up movie. Hope that that's good. Just... I think what sums it up the most is is there is like a minor character in the Avatar universe, and he's just the cabbage salesman. And like it's just a running gag. Each season, he'll be selling some cabbages. His cabbages get knocked over. And he's like, my cabbages! That's it. Oh, see, that's yeah. that's the whole joke. Mm-hmm. And it happens like in each season, and then in like Legend of Korra, they they, they say like like he that guy created like a company called like Cam- Cabbage Corp that hates the <laughs> Avatar. And that's like that's the extent of the joke. In like mm-hmm. episode three, the guy who does the voice for that comes back in and just he reprises his role as the cabbage salesman. Mm. But they have like four moments during that episode where he appears and goes, would you like a cabbage? And they do it like four fucking times. And like they, 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 they as well, they, they hint at it of like his cabbage thing nearly gets knocked over. He's like, oh, my cat. Oh, okay. They're fine. Oh, and they do it like to- three times. And it's like, it wasn't even that funny in the original show. <laughs> no. It's not that funny. Give the guy, like, you know, give the guy a fucking cameo who gives a shit. Don't make it like, this thing of like, ah, do you know? It's like, yes, we know who it is. Who mm-hmm. is this for? If not for people who watch the original show. Yeah, and at that point, you should just continue the joke and just do it the one time. Yep. But that's the thing, like, you know, if you, if I'm just thinking, someone who's never seen the show like Charlie was, because he looked at me and was like, what? Why? Mm-hmm. Who is this guy? Why does he keep getting like so much like prominence in the frame? And it's like, oh, it's a, a running gag from the original show. It's like, oh, am I supposed to fucking know that? Yeah. Who is it? It's like, and what like, does this add to the show if it doesn't? And uh, surely this TV show, as I mentioned with like, as I was saying, with the One Piece thing of like, surely this is intended for people that haven't watched it because it's a cartoon mm-hmm. and don't want to watch animation. It, and it's for those people who have not seen it, really. That's the target it. audience. But if you're going to remake it for the people who like the original show, why not put more stuff it's like it's it's a show for nobody mm-hmm. same with like the film it's a film for nobody yeah like seemingly the film was made for m night Shyamalan, and uh, well, nobody it was else apparently made for his kid and he couldn't even do that properly that's the bit that gets me of like the reason he was drawn to the project is because his own daughter finally saw herself in a character in a show that she could mm-hmm. attach herself to. And then like his like casting choice was, I need to hire a blonde white girl to play this character. <laughs> the first character my daughter has ever seen herself as in a show, I need white people to play this like to play this cast. Last thing you could have just played that off as the most selfish play in the world of just cast his daughter. I'm gonna cast someone that looks like an older version of my daughter just so that she'll get gratification out of this. If nothing else, I can be a selfish dickhead and cast someone that looks like an older version of my daughter to fulfill that yep. one purpose. It's hilarious. And just like the for the second time we've had just a live action adaptation of Avatar, that's not as good as the original. And that's the thing, Netflix owns the rights to the original. Like I see this live action TV show, it's a two hundred million dollar trailer for the show. Yeah. And that's that's always what I say is that I'm not upset that these live action versions exist and yeah, they're they're nearly always, if not always, just an inferior version of the product, but I at least hope that it serves as a gateway to get people into anime yeah. and cartoons. Like my only thing is like who is it for? So it's clearly not for me because I'm a fan of the original. It's like, well, I'll just go rewatch the original then. Are you going to mm-hmm. tell them, like, if they were going to do anything to attract like fans of the original, tell me a story I didn't see. The thing is, Carl, you've you've given them your watch hours now. You have proven that on someone else's Netflix account, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you've told them it's for you. I 
I can see that you're very happy about both versions of Avatar that have come out. It's like I said, I, I don't know who it's for. Because mm-hmm. as a fan of the original, the original's still better. Because just the story is better. Like he doesn't feel truncated and rushed. But wouldn't that be a nice experience, I guess, of you know, never watching this and watching it on Netflix and going, Oh, that's I like those characters and that world seems cool. So guess what? We've got a better longer version There's of a it. A better for longer you. version of it, yeah. As I said, watching mm-hmm. just our mutual friend watch through it and just like the the jokes that are like, A, hey, A, hey, fans of the original, do you get this? And our friend is just like that's the, if you're gonna that's the, uh, said the, the cabbage guy, he gets like a minute and a half of screen time for a one second joke. Dear God, yeah. Just you gotta you gotta really lean one way or the other. <sighs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Let's go to a break, show. <laughs> I'm just gonna like leave for a minute to cleanse this out of my brain. Let's go. So we're both back from our break, Lucas, and just to reiterate for anyone listening at home, if you would like to continue the discussion myself and Lucas just had, you can do so in the Discord, which will be linked and found below. There's also other things you can click way down there, including mine and my... Mine and Lucas's, or Lucas and Mys. <laughs> Either way, you can find links to our Twitchers, mine being carlswood.tv and Lucas's being legendofcanto.tv over on Twitch, where we play games. Not, not, I don't play as I many mean, games as you, you play more than me. Yeah, it's technically .tv slash the ah, names, but they, yeah, you, you click, find the links below. Click that button and it will just direct you to other content myself and Lucas <laughs> make. <laughs> yeah, and of course, for myself, that is uh, Mass Effect Mondays, Tunic Tuesdays for Zelda, and Thunder Badge Thursdays for Pokemon content. And for me, it's like, okay, so what day of the week are none of my friends wanting to go out? Let's get drunk and play Metal Gear of Vengeance. Let's go. <laughs> Normally a Friday, but sometimes a Saturday, sometimes a Thursday. But never last more than week once a week. Wednesday. Yes, because it was the 11-year uh, anniversary of the entire game. It was indeed. For European release. For the European release, <laughs> Just, yes. Um, but yeah. I don't know if there's anything else to get on with for housekeeping wise. I think we're quiet this week. And in which case, let's crack on. Tell me about your week, my friend. <laughs> well, you know, talking about just that like. A little giggle says it all. That's, uh, that's either uh, something real bad or real good. Uh, like, I was just you know, thinking about like appeasing fan bases. Okay. And fan bases that are rather vocal and maybe a lot less sensical than the Avatar fan base has been over the last uh, couple of releases. Okay. Is this Destiny? Um, it's not Destiny, but it is gaming, because I'm talking roughly related to the console wars, Carl. So, we were all there, one. <laughs> we were all, what, 12 once, and we gave a yeah. shit, because, like, you know, this rec- like when you're 12, the rectangle that you play video games on is very important to you, and when your mm-hmm. other friend has a different rectangle, or in the case of the GameCube, the cube, <laughs> it's very upsetting that your friend has a different rectangle. When you get to, like, I mean, past 18, anyone giving a fuck is so weird. It's very weird, very cringy, and guess what? You have fallen for, like, marketing and propaganda 101. Yep. Of just get attached to our consumer product and hate the other consumer products and stay loyal to us no matter what. It's weird, though, because, like, um, console warring is more like a teenage thing, but... Basically, the exact same energy is applied to phones. But again, just mm. whatever fucking rectangle you have in your pocket. Like, this is my phone. It is I'm, an iPhone. You can't see the logo on it, but I've got a Google. You have a Google Pixel. Is it Google Pixel? Yeah, six, yeah. Do you give a fuck that I'm using an iPhone right now? Do you care? Not at all. Can we still message Look each off. other? Your bubble's going to be, like, green or blue, whatever. I don't even I, know how it is on. I have legit had people send me messages asking me why I use an iPhone. <laughs> it's like, because it's what my you know provider offered me with like the things I need. But iPhone, you can't customize it. You can't jailbreak it. It's like I don't care. I want a rectangle that calls my mom. Mm-hmm. And they, they, it's and it's like I get I get why you'd care if it's like it's your device. But why mm-hmm. do you care about what I'm using? Exactly. And again, it is this you know absolute just marketing ploy of getting people attached to fucking brands. Yeah. yeah. Brand is my friend. I will defend like, Brand on Twitter. Everyone can see the amount of shit I've got behind me on camera, oh, yeah. unless you're listening audio-wise. Where, imagine, just, you know, the classic, I've got the, the gamer stuff behind me, like all the 
We've got like video game consoles, like games, Amiibo, like gaming books and stuff like that, yep. all my collectibles. Like, I've, I've, I'm clearly a person that is attached to gaming in general, and I have an affinity for Wiggler, aka Nintendo stuff. Yes. And, you know, it's like, I have an affinity for Nintendo because that was the thing I grew up with and I, like, you know, formed my gaming personality around a little bit as a youth, yeah. but... It's the thing we always talk about, isn't it? Like, they're called your formative years for a reason. And mm-hmm. it's like the classic yeah. Onion article, isn't it? Like, it just so happens that the best music ever made was the music released when I was 14. <laughs> exactly. And I, I will admit, I have an affinity for Nintendo and I, you know, like a lot of those games, but... I'm not going to sit here and just get mad salty because someone likes PlayStation. Yeah, so what is your, the topic of your wiki today, then? Well, the topic of my wiki brings up something that like people have been talking a lot about, um, the state of like, exclusives on okay. consoles. And one thing that I thought I'd bring up is a fascinating thing of... Um, the, ca- the, the, the wiki that I'm on is category of PlayStation 5-only games. Okay. So, Carl... Let's delve in. Specifically, games um, that are... It doesn't say games that are on both PC and PS5. So I think it, it's literally games that are only available on PlayStation 5. They're not on PC, they're not on Xbox, they're not on Switch, nothing yeah, can, like that. You can only play these on your PlayStation branded rectangle. Exactly. And, and can you guess, um, like three and a bit years into the life cycle... How many games are only available on PlayStation 5? I'm going to guess less than 10. Uh, you're actually pretty spot on because there are 13 pages in this category, but not all of them are even released yet. Yeah, because most PlayStation games get eventually released on PC. Yeah. Which is and, like, um, Lucas, we've got to remember, PC is the most important rectangle. Yeah, of course. It's the most yeah. important rectangle because people with the, with the PC rectangle are the most obsessed with their rectangle being the best rectangle. And I, I, I love I'm... calling it a rectangle, because people get so <laughs> mad when you when you break it down. It is. It's just a fucking it's, rectangle. It's all just rectangles that play games. Every, it's like, I think it's Charlie Brooker who says And obviously PC does a lot more than play games, but yeah, yeah. I think it's, it comes from a Charlie Brooker quote when he's talking about Black Mirror. And he's just like, so much of like Black Mirror is based on technology. It's like, yeah, because so many people are just fucking obsessed with whatever rectangle's in their pocket. They, they mm-hmm. look at their little rectangle to read reviews of things that were on their big rectangle. It's and like, they go to work to look, like look at their medium-sized rectangle. rectangle. And spend all day working on your medium-sized rectangle and then yeah. go home and look at your big rectangle. Yeah, and then look at your little rectangle till you go to bed. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what, for anyone curious, that's where the term Black Mirror comes from. Uh, Black Mirror comes from... Um, when you turn off a screen and you see yourself <laughs> reflected in it, a black mirror. When Netflix has like gone through the three episodes that you're playing, the black screen appears. Are you still watching? And it's just the crumpled mess on the sofa. Yeah. Of like, oh, leave me alone. That's what Black Mirror refers to. Mm-hmm. And I, and, um, I always love the way he summed it up of just like referring to a phone as a fucking rectangle. <laughs> and it completely changed the way I looked at technology. Of like, yeah, it's a rectangle that serves a purpose. That's all you need it to do. Anything beyond or less, anything beyond or more than that is a bonus. But you need it. It's a rectangle that calls your mom. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I always find it funny because you know there are some, not many, games that are exclusive to boxes that aren't a PC. Mm-hmm. And um, it's always funny when like PC gamers go. Well, we are by matter of fact the greatest because we get to play. Every single game as they that's go, ever yeah. released. They say that and then they play go, League for 14 hours. Well, yeah, but also I just go, okay, but like Nintendo games aren't on there. And they go, yeah, but we can emulate them. Is that, okay, so the the argument that just comes down to like fucking emulation and piracy. Okay, let's not have a discussion then. It's um, also as well, like, I don't care. No, I don't. That's the, it's and like, I, oh, if you had a PC, you could play every game on there. It's like, but I just um, want the thing we always say is that we want a, a rectangle that you put a disc in and it plays the game and it'll be guaranteed mm-hmm. to play the games that I put into it for 15 years. Yeah, I can't and guarantee I, that with a PC. Like, I admittedly don't have um, a good graphics card, I've got like a 1060 i I think it is. Like, basically, I have an editing PC where I have like a lot of RAM, same for me, good I don't CPU even know what's in and mine. stuff like that. I, 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 just, I, I just go, know. I gave a friend Every- <laughs> money. 
Who knows what they're so talking just build about? One. And he built me one, and he gave me some money back. And I took the receipts yeah. and I gave them to my accountant. Because I don't give a fuck. And I specifically have an editor's PC where like, everything is good apart from like the GPU. That was the thing where it's like I'll upgrade my graphics card, you know, when the prices get a bit more reasonable, kind of thing. They'll never get more. I've reasonable. just not graded it yet, but like everything else is pretty damn good in there. But I, you know, not got the best graphics card. But whenever I try and run a game. And it's not even like, you know, new modern 4K games that I'm trying to run or anything. It's just whenever I've booted up Steam, there's always like something has gone wrong or there's something to troubleshoot. Or, you know, even when I've tried to emulate games for streaming, it's like something always has got to be a problem with the emulator or something. Like an infomercial of like, surely there's an easier way. And it's just, <laughs> and put your disc into a console. It might be better on PC if you get everything running, but I just like having the simple option of just, yeah, the box under my TV that just kind of works. It's the technological equivalent of people saying, why are you ordering food from a takeaway when you could bit, like make it yourself at home for cheaper? It's like, because I don't want to spend four and a half hours making it. I just want, to, <laughs> I want it to be at my door and I can eat it. I just want it to be fucking easy. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day. But I am um, willing to pay extra for the convenience, which is basically how all commerce has worked for the last 300 <laughs> years. Like, people will pay to have things be easier for them. Uh, so I'm just counting up here. So there are 13 games on this list, Carl. Yep. And uh, it looks like what one, two, three, four, five of these games are not released yet. Okay. So there are eight current games, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is about to become the ninth. Okay. But there are eight current games that are exclusive to PlayStation Five. Okay. You're going to ask me to guess what they are, right? Well, I mean, just see if you can remember, like, a couple of them, maybe. I'm going to guess the physical is that Astro Room Playbot. Does that count? Uh, Astro's Playroom. That does is, count. Yeah, 100%. Like, that is a video game. That it's, is it's a full maybe game. the best PS5 exclusive. <laughs> because it's the only one that takes full advantage of the PlayStation 5 systems. I guess mm-hmm. the other one will be Spider-Man 2. It's the first Spider-Man. Spider-Man not. 2 was one, yeah. Bloodborne. No, wait, that's PS4. Uh, Bloodborne is PS4. It's PS4. Yeah, it's, it's, locked, ago, it's, yeah. it's trapped in that ecosystem. Like 10 years old. Um, I was just thinking like PlayStation exclusives. Uh, so there is one that um, is like from software related, if you can remember that one. No, it's wrong. Me, Elden Ring is it? It's going to be uh, Sekiro 2? No, Sekiro. Sekiro. No. Um, it is a remake of Demon Souls. Oh, of course, the Demon Souls remake. Man, so that's the thing. This is the thing. I've gotten, I'm now at a point where I'm old where I just don't care. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I've got a rectangle, but fuck it. I don't care if it's exclusive. It's like, and uh, then um, Ragnarok. So no, got those a- are the only. I I would say like those are the only real like big notable hitters. I would say uh, the rest of the list is the Dark Pictures Switchback VR, which I'm not aware <laughs> of. Destruction All Stars, which was pretty naff on release. Um, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is like a VR game, the yes. only VR two game that PlayStation have put out. Um, Quantum Error that I'm not aware of, and Silent Hill, the short message. And then the ones to be released are Death Stranding 2 on the Beach, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Marvel's Wolverine, Rise of the Ronin, and Stellar Blade. So all in all, 13 games exclusive to this rectangle. Eight of them that are currently (laughs) released as of time of recording. And just to clarify, myself and you, we have PS5s, right? Yeah, so I have like an Xbox Series S, a PS5, and um, a couple of Nintendo Switches that you know I share with my partner. Like between us, we have those consoles in the house. And I have just I bought a PS5 because I just knew the next gen of fighting games. Follow because I played all my fighting games on Xbox, and then no fucker played on Xbox. So I thought, well, yeah. I'm just gonna get PlayStation Five because I have Street Fighter Six, I'll have Mortal Kombat One, I'll have Tekken Eight. I'll be on there, and that, it'll be, that'll be the tournament standard for if I want to dip my toes into that world again. And I think it's a more interesting discussion, not necessarily like what games are exclusive, but more just how much it doesn't really matter. N- not at all. Like the only, because if you absolutely, desperately, desperately need to play God of War Ragnarok, okay, yeah. It works on a PS4, yep. but, you know, it's one of those, of, of course, playing something... You know, playing on a hardware that was eight years old at the time. I, I did it. The I played Ragnarok yeah. on the PS4. It worked. The PlayStation didn't like <laughs> it, but it worked. 
Um, and it's just one of those of, yeah, you will not get as nice resolution. The frame rate might be worse. Like, the loading times are going to be way worse. Uh, the only thing on that list that I care about is loading times. I have not cared about how a game looks in about 15 years. That's the thing I, is, I just do not care. I remember playing The Last of Us 2 and going, like, games don't need to look this good, if not better. Like, just games do not need to be as meticulously detailed as fucking Red Dead Redemption 2. Just make them fun. Make them hell divers. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought when it's like, um, uh, there's, there's a Switch 2 got rumoured and said, oh, it's probably going to be as powerful mm-hmm. as a PS4. And be what? Like, only as powerful as a PS4? So like you mean the thing that played God of War Ragnarok? Cool. The thing that look, yeah, runs like Red Dead Two, Last of Us Part Two, God of War, Ragnarok. Do you know how good those things fucking look? And just, and just for some yeah. people, they need it. They need the. Tr- is it triangles? The triangles. That's what I've seen. It's some sort of like the triangle. There's yeah. only basically every model in every video game is just a triangles, and the more triangles, like, the more detail there is. But it's diminishing returns. There's only there's only yeah. so many triangles you can fit in. And there's not. There is no limit to how many triangles you could feasibly put on a character model, for example, but it, it, as you say, it's diminishing returns. At yep. some point, you're just going to stop noticing or caring. Yeah, it's like TVs. Like They've got like 8K now. It's like, yeah. I don't need many more K. <laughs> I'm good for the amount of K that's on screen. I'm good with this amount. Now mm-hmm. just make them cheaper. There is... It's very difficult to tell when you're you know, six to ten foot away from a TV, which is the recommended viewing range for most of them. Is like I don't believe that. Very because... hard to tell the difference between, like, 1440p and 4K and 8K. And there is differences, but you can have to sit there and scrutinise. I will never forget. I mentioned my ex-girlfriend earlier, so I'll mention her again, because the story she would tell. <laughs> just and it, it sounds like it would be the most insufferable thing to deal with, besides, obviously, living with me. And she said her ex before me was obsessed obsessed with the quality of their television mm. to the point where like th- they had to get a specific internet provider because they would get a discount on a specific kind of tv right and they were only allowed to watch movies after a certain time so there was no light that's get blackout curtains and then they would like you know and they had to watch it and if there was like any sort of like issue with like the tv they'd sit there and adjust all the settings and stuff mm. but i remember when i heard that song i was like Man, that must have been awful. And she went, do you want to make it worse? And what's that? Went, he downloaded all of his movies illegally online. And he'd get mad if it said, <laughs> 10, if it said Blu-ray copy and it was 1080p. He's like, I cannot think of a more little example of beggars being choosers. Mm-hmm. Of complaining that the illegally downloaded version of your film is not in the correct definition. It's like spending um, yeah, all that money the- on a TV and then just not buying the Blu-ray. I was going to say, not going out and buying the most immaculate, like, 4k blu-ray version of the movie of just well fuck it i've got the the box that looks the best i've got the best box ever mm-hmm. like, and then my i'm not even gonna the best view rectangle. things like oh i'm just gonna stream every movie and it just it sounds like, like the most infuriating thing ever it's like what happens if you want to watch a movie so we had to wait at night because we couldn't watch it with any glare on the tv mm-hmm. and then like i think the tv had like a dead pixel on it and just every like five minutes into watching, dead pixels there so it doesn't matter like there's a dead pixel, I can't see anything but the dead pixel. It's like, why? Mm. Why do you care this much? And you know what? I, I, I'm I fully on board with the idea of if you're really into a certain type of technology, like, you're you know, the best if you're version, an audiophile, yeah. if you, you know, for example, if you're really into, like, TV qualities and stuff, like, go for it, yeah. Cool, but just, like, try your best to not inflict that agony onto people that don't give a shit. Well, you know, speaking of audio files, we're both listening on headphones right now, right? Yeah. And the headphones that I have, are these are some of the best headphones that money can buy because they cost £10 and they are... Is it written on there? No, it's not got the exact thing, but these are Sony MX5 something. They cost 11 quid on Amazon. <laughs> and if you go look at the reviews, every single review for them is like five stars... Or one star. And all the five star ones are like, mm. for 11 quid, you cannot get a better set of headphones. Like, these have lasted me 10 years. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, 3.5 millimeter jack. Like, you know, not the best, but for a tenner, 11 quid, you can't go wrong. Then all the mm-hmm. one star reviews are, my Sennheiser, 500 pound like, headphones are better than this. It's like, of course they fucking are. These aren't <laughs> for you. It's funny, we mentioned the reason to get a phone earlier. The reason that I upgraded my... Uh, I admittedly had a Pixel 3, but the reason I upgraded my phone when I did 
was because it was like, well, if you go get the, the Pixel 6 now and upgrade like three months early, you will get a free set of like noise cancelling Bose fancy three hundred pound yeah. headphones. And I was like, you know what? That's a really nice deal. Yeah, cool. I needed to upgrade my phone anyway. I'll go do that. Perfect. And it's like those are they're not Sennheiser top range like thousand pound headphones, but they are n- very good noise cancelling. They are pretty good quality headphones, it's and a, then they are like just passing the mid range. Yeah, like, these, these are entry level. Also... There's mid range, and there's like that weird like slushy period where it's between like mid range and top end, and there's top end that's like thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah, yeah. And diminishing um, returns comes in again there, where like it's one of those of, of like that's nice to have, but at the same time, I've got two sets of these headphones, and everyone watches on video knows that I've just got like kitty cat headphones. And guess what? They were twenty quid, and I bought these ones specifically because these had kitty cat ears on them. It just looks funnier. And it's like, you know what? That looks kind of cute. I'm gonna buy some kitty cat headphones yep. and not care because this is what I use for listening to like Carl's voice when I'm streaming and recording. Like, the quality doesn't matter as much as just like, you know, just having access. Like these, I got them because they were a tenner because they're going to get beaten up and knocked around because I'm going to use them for streaming. They're going to be like, you know, chucked on a floor mm-hmm. sometimes. Like I just need something that's going, I know I'm going to pull it out of the box and it's just going to work guaranteed. And like I said, these yeah. have worked fine for a decade. And it's the exact same reason of, you know, having, for example, the Xbox Series S of, well, we've just got a PS5. I don't particularly fancy spending £500 on an Xbox Series X as well, but it would be really nice to be able to have some kind of option to play Destiny 2 with good loading times yep. with Jenna. So, you know, we've got two TVs in the living room and we you both play set, Destiny You've got the Sakurai set up. <laughs> we do, yeah. <laughs> the double TV and everything. And It's like, well, we had the PS5 and the moment I watched that PS5 low destiny 2 compared to my xbox one original i was like i can't I, n- no and it's like well there's a nice cheap like 1080p option that you can spend a couple hundred less quid on and go pick that up now and it was available now and i was like yeah let's just do that fuck it i will pay for just this small incremental little rectangle that's nice and easy and cheap and will just look, like play my destiny a bit better we're using the word cheap relative relative to the cost relative of, like- to the series x which is you know 200 pounds more which you know is that's not 40 yeah. percent more price it's so not something myself and lucas job. we'd be very very keen on this like you know we when we say stuff like you know i know even like 10 pounds that's a lot of money to a lot of people and one of the things that mm-hmm. i've always been keen to avoid as i've like you know achieved success and stuff online is never like you know dismissing how much things cost of course yeah and you know i literally to to maybe prove a point of i didn't think that was super cheap and disposable amount of income i got that on like the xbox payment plan yep where it's like over pay it off over two years with game pass and it'll cost the same amount as if you just paid for both of them up front. Well, yeah, something we experienced isn't it we were talking about like um the digital versions of consoles and some people they just couldn't understand why you'd want to get the digital versions like, but this version can do it in 4k it's like well for some people like they don't have a 4k tv I remember that being mm-hmm. a thing of like when they released the state, like not at like 12% of people had 4K TVs. Like literally yeah. they are 90% almost of the consumer base that they want does not have the ability to enjoy the full, like, you know, capabilities of what this machine can do. It's no wonder mm-hmm. it's not popular. Yeah. All the people choose and the cheaper option that, you know, basically gives them everything they need for that moment. Even with having a 4K TV. It's like, okay, cool. Well, you know, as a secondary kind of ancillary console, I'll do my Xbox Game Pass games on this Xbox that's 1080p, and I only stream really doing like Game Pass games on Nintendo games, and mm-hmm. that my my capture card only does 1080p anyway, that's so I'm not going to need 4K though, yeah. for that. I-, I love it when and, like the idea of spending all that money on a TV and then just streaming everything from Netflix. It's like you're not going to get yeah, it. In- yeah. And then yeah, I've got the the fancy. 4k ps5 there and i'll go by you know when resident evil 4 came out for example the remake and i wanted the best possible version that money could buy i'll go buy on the playstation and have that better quote-unquote experience over there and it's like but i that's an option that i already have and it's a minor percentage of my playtime i think for most of the time i'm just going to be like streaming or playing destiny and listening to a podcast or something, 
and just like I, I don't need this like big 4k box just does it load destiny a bit faster well yeah that's the, the weird thing about like the uh, the console warring stuff like and the phone warring there's like any sort of like just manufactured like just customer animosity between people is that the more sophisticated devices get the less that you should have a reason to give a shit because mm-hmm. it gets to the point where the differences are so minuscule or incremental why would you care? So I remember when they were like announced that the newest iPhone, for example, and one of the selling points is it's 1% thinner. <laughs> it's like at that point, why does anyone give a shit? Well, people give the biggest shit. They give it's more of a shit now zero, than they did back when then when phones would have like different screen sizes or like, you know, yeah. they would be like, like when game consoles literally used to have different internal hardware and like entirely di- different versions of games got released for consoles. Mm-hmm. People get more of a shit now when the games are virtually indistinguishable from each other. Yeah, and it's just, it's really funny to see people still have these attachments to these consoles. And it's it's been so long since, you know, the the days of marketing where it's like, Sega do what Nintendo owned. That was still always so funny. And Crash Bandicoot coming to Nintendo's fucking... NOA office and doing like the megaphone thing of like, hey Nintendo's a piece of shit, come out here and fight me. Yeah. And yeah, I can understand why especially younger people had such an attachment and like you know, why we had console warriors back well, in the day like, because it's quite literally that's like what you know, we were being told to fight for. You were like, encouraged. As kids, we were being told like these are the enemy, get PlayStation. You were encouraged to make Nintendo. it a part of your personality. Mm-hmm. Well, I I think maybe the last real example I can remember off the top of my head of that was the whole, um, here's how you share games on a PS4. Yeah, I think that's the last time any company, and at least any big company, directly acknowledged it. Mm -hmm. Most recently, it's just been like, well, like fundamentally, an Xbox and a PlayStation 5, they're basically the same fucking thing. They're just different PCs, yeah. Yeah, it's like they just have slightly different... It's like looking at phones now when you go into a shop, and it's like every phone is like, you know, a 7 by 3 inch rectangle by what you mm-hmm. can afford. Yeah. And, and for me, I just got this it, one. Do you know why? Because it was red. <laughs> I, got, I, I literally just go, why do you want a red phone? Because no one else has a red phone. I want, yeah, I want yeah. a phone that I can put down and know where I've like, put it. It's red. It's like, well, don't you care about the specs inside? It's going to run exactly the same as my old phone. Exactly. And I know there's also going to be people like screaming at this video version go Cole doesn't have a case on his phone no do you know why I don't have a case on my phone because I it's a nice phone that cost me lots of money I don't want it to like a wrap it in plastic it's mm-hmm. insured it's insured I've got Apple fucking care on it if it breaks I get a new one Every, yeah. everything's on the that's the thing everything's on the cloud all technology yeah. is it's so disp- and I hate that it is but all be stupid of those to pretend small that it's pictures not. they're just up in the cloud yeah it's all my, yeah, all my it's... data is on the cloud. Like, I remember when I pulled it out of the box and I got my old phone. I put my old phone on top of it and it just says, we detect another iPhone. Do you want to transfer everything over? And it just, literally everything was just saved. And it it's felt... one of the kind of like disappointing parts you don't nowadays, get, yeah. I'd say, of getting a new phone or when I got like a PS5 or it an Xbox. Yeah, it doesn't feel special I'm... anymore. It just, it just it, downloads it your profile and puts everything on there for you. Yeah, it doesn't feel like new or cool or anything because you just... You open it up and it's like, do you want to transfer your profile? Yeah. Okay, this is your old thing, but better. Yeah. Same thing and with this phone. When I boot uh, it up and it's like, it's exactly the same. Just ev- everything looks a bit crisper. There's more memory. Mm-hmm. Apps open a bit quicker. Yeah. All my photos um, are there. All my like logins were saved and stuff like that. I didn't have to go, uh, you know, it's just more than anything. It's exactly the same. And when I get another phone in two years, presumably I'll get another iPhone and I'll pull it out of the box, and it'll just transfer everything over, and I'll have the same fucking rectangle. And no, one, just so will, no one will care, except for weirdos who really care. Like, I, I just don't know why people care that much anymore, and I also, yes, I always go back my, to just... My phone that. matches <laughs> my cutlery. Which matches the John Cena lunchbox yeah. right behind you in camera. So everything in my but, kitchen um, is red. It's just... Also, my phone matches my uh, thing. So, you know what? I care about aesthetics more than I care about function because the function of almost every device is exactly the same now. Yeah. We don't need to care about function anymore because they're all, they all do the same thing. People just care so much, but like, it's so funny seeing just Xbox fans absolutely lose their mind over the past couple of weeks to the point where like the 
Xbox like heads had to do like a 20 minute podcast of calm the fuck down and stop spinning yourself up over these rumors. Yeah. And the rumors were just like, oh, hey, um, a couple of Xbox games are going to not be exclusive to Xbox anymore. Yeah. Do you know why? Because the company that makes Xbox likes money. Yeah. They, they... Microsoft turns out Microsoft really like money. Yeah. Microsoft looked at a graph of like how many copies of this game will we sell if we put on Xbox exclusively? How many copies will we sell if we let PlayStation pay their cup? Oh, we'll make mm-hmm. twice as much. Awesome. Sick. Like, got it. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. It's like, let's <laughs> just do it. And. <laughs> Do you Just the of? amount of Xbox yeah. fans are like, oh my god, like no game ever is going to be on Xbox anymore. I've wasted all my money. Fuck Xbox. Like I'm going to go just b- burn my console outside of my garden. It's like, just calm down. Do you know what it reminds like, me of? It reminds me of like football rivalries. Mm. Where I, 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 this, I've never understood football rivalries. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, it's something you get attached to. You attach your personality to it. But the fans will go and kick the living fuck out of each other for supporting mm-hmm. the wrong team. Well, the players on the pitch will just shake each other's hand at the end of it and go for a beer afterwards. Yeah. And that's like, the people being paid millions of dollars a, like, you know, a year to kick a ball around a field, they don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. But the the play the fans do. Same like Xbox. The actual like, team doesn't really care that much. Like Xbox don't give a fuck about whether their game is exclusive or not. They care about how much mm-hmm. money they're going to make. Exactly. But, and realistically... A lot of the reason that they didn't put every game on PlayStation right now is probably just the optics of seeing how many people lost their mind over a rumor that maybe Gears of War that's five years old might go to a PlayStation console. Oh, wow. The thing is, I'd look at that and go think, wow, Xbox. So it's a game that you don't really sell many copies of more and you uh, you could potentially have access to like 40 million new potential um, customers mm-hmm. who've heard about Gears yeah. of War but been in the PlayStation ecosystem since it was released. And then people are like, what is Xbox doing? Making money. This mm-hmm. is why you don't run Xbox. <laughs> and it's just so funny to see the the rumor of like, well, we think Hi-Fi Rush is coming to Switch and PlayStation, which it is coming to PlayStation, confirmed, but... I mean, the, that game with the guy that looks like became, me. That became, like, people that have dedicated their entire life to... Just worshipping Xbox, going, I'm done. Yeah. This is all over now. How can they, they, they why would they make a decision like this? Me? It's because they like money. It's oddly enough, companies are not your friend. No, and that's that's the funniest thing is as a consumer, as a, a customer, I don't really like the word consumer, but like I use as, it a lot because you know, I like, you know, I consume a lot of like industry and trade I, publications. That's the thing is that is what we have been programmed. Like this is the capitalist mindset, right? Of like consume things, buy new things, and it's just as a customer, we are literally better off if it's just available in more places. Of course, yeah. Like it's like it's one of the weirder things of the companies allowing their exclusive quote-unquote products to be on other ecosystems or the SKUs is nothing but beneficial for the customer because it just gives us as customers more choice and i don't want to sound like people and it's because then it's not special people like exactly. to feel special they like to think that they've got something it's like and, every time you know, i bring up my iphone like the thing that i always get for is huh, can you customize um what your ringtone is it's like no because i've had my phone on silent for seven years <laughs> well, they like to think there's something they can do that you can't and you'd be annoyed that you can't do that thing it's like I don't care and, the, and yeah. when you tell them that you don't care they get mad about it because if you don't care that means other people might not care and it might mean the thing they care about is pointless and ultimately it is that of course, as yes. you say these things these rectangles do not cost an insignificant amount of money to yeah. most people and you have to essentially place your bets on which box you want to be part of an ecosystem like, Lucas, for. And... Yeah. Would you want to go back to the days of like when you had to say, okay, do you want to buy a VHS player or a Betamax player? And you, yeah, if you exactly. bought Betamax, and because that's the thing everyone always gets about Betamax, it's a joke. Betamax was better. On paper, Betamax was better. As a product. As a yes. product, it was better. And it fucking failed. And people who bought into that ecosystem got screwed. HD, DVD, mm-hmm. or Blu ray. Which one are you going to buy into? Oh, I'll buy into like, you know, HD DVD was like, is was the VHS of that comparison. I'll go into Blu ray. Mm-hmm. Okay, you won this one. Yeah, and just, well, oh, what? Well, I've oh, you invested all my money into this thing that failed. Well, sucks to be you. Yeah. 
And I get it. It's like that is inherently why it's easy for these companies to coerce people into becoming console warriors. And again, so the point where they haven't even tried for like 10 years and people still have this mindset. I don't know why anyone would want it though. It's like iPhone. I I annoyingly have got the iPhone that doesn't have the USB. Actually, no. Yeah, mine has USB-C. So I've now got an iPhone that has USB-C. People were complaining about that. They didn't want the iPhone to have USB-C. So, oh, well, Even though it just makes life easier because it's just more universally compatible with every wire you've got in your house. Yeah. It's like, I don't want that because it doesn't charge. It charges like 4% slower. But now... And... But don't worry because they've released like the £200 iPhone version of a USB-C that does charge faster. It's so baffling. I don't know why... And the reason for me wondering why don't I know what my phone charges with is I've just got one of those like pads next to my bed. Oh, the wireless charging. So I just put, yeah, my, yeah. I just put my phone on that. And as someone say, well, you know, that charge your phone slower or doesn't lead to the battery. It's like, I don't... I, Again. I don't like, give up. I'm never out of my house or away from a charging port for longer than six hours. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and yeah, I just... I, I wanted to just, you know, use that as a, it's a, it's a fun conversation. Of this discussion yeah. of like, I just... I really don't want to get into the people's heads, but I... I, I kind of understand why it happens but just i mean look people have a ps5 people are enjoying the fact they have a ps5 i enjoy the fact i have a ps5 and an xbox and a switch and i'm in a position where i'm able to afford that luxury of Mm. having all the consoles but it benefits you as a person if you could buy one rectangle and every game was available on it and if the, the it was a PlayStation, if it was an Xbox, if it was a Nintendo system, it doesn't actually really matter which one it was. If all games are on there, it would just be better for us and probably also just make the companies more money that you're rooting for anyway. Yeah. It's and it's just like just you know, I wish that we could all live in this world as, you know, gamers TM copyright and just sit in one big circle and all sing like Kumbaya together and just enjoy games rather than being like, well, I've got to shit on Xbox because they're losing their exclusive. It's like there's eight games exclusive on a PS5. Eight. I think, And it yeah. doesn't matter and it doesn't hinder your enjoyment. But were you upset, Carl, when you were playing Helldivers 2 with me the other week and we were having a blast? Were you like upset at the fact the PC players had that available to them. No. So when I'm playing Tekken and I can turn on, like, you know, um, uh, cross play, and now I've got, like, you know, I've just tripled the size of the pool of people I can exactly. play with. Exactly. If anything, it's more beneficial because you're able to play more, like, the games more and for longer because the community is just bigger and more accessible. It's the same energy as, like, years ago. When like you know, video game companies realize, wait a minute, do you know who else has got money? Women. And they started like you know trying to appeal more to women with their products. And you had like weird baby men complain about it. Like, why would you be annoyed at more people being interested in the thing that you base your entire personality around? It's like comic book movies. Mm-hmm. Like when comic book movies became mainstream, it's like oh, normies it- are liking these things. Like, why are you complaining that more people enjoy the thing again? You base your entire personality around. Surely this was... is what you want. And they'll say, oh, I got bullied for liking this in school. And now you don't. Now yeah. you don't. And aren't you grateful that you can now have a conversation with most people down at the pub about Marvel? Yep. But yep. It does that not... Is that not a more like fun, exciting world for you to live in than sitting there and not being able to talk to anybody <laughs> about it? Even if they have... A less, you know, even if they've not read the comic books, it's like, at least you can mention the word like Captain America, and someone knows what you're talking about. I think for a lot of people, yes. For a small but vocal minority, the answer is, no, they don't like that because, as I said, I use the term make basing your entire personality around this thing. And Mm -hmm. I'm not, there's like, you know, I'm using that in kind of a negative way because it's, it's not a bad thing to like Marvel movies. It's not a bad thing to like video games. But when you base your entire personality around it, a, pitfall you can fall into and that no doubt everyone out there listening to this has met a person like this of because so much of their personality hinges on liking this one thing anything that would challenge it they see it as an attack against them mm-hmm. we've all met that person like who just 
They're so obs- like they you they criticize a game they like and they see it as mm-hmm. an attack on them and they react yeah. very negatively towards you. They can't look at the thing objectively. And just I can see why that'd be appealing to a lot of people who just don't have the confidence or so they'd like express themselves how they really are. Like they'd rather glob on to something that they own and attach their personality to that instead. Mm-hmm. I'm maybe not explaining this the best way, but No, I I kinda get what you mean, but just it, it's one of those things of it's why a lot of gatekeeping happens is that this thing that you have grown up with or loved your entire life or whatever, you've seen that as like a special thing that not many people are into and it's made you different. And then all of a sudden you realize, yeah, people millions of people trying to make it mainstream, are people trying to rip away like that special feeling that you get for being the only person you know that's into that yeah, thing. Like we've right? always we all met that person who likes anime. And they think they're special for liking anime. It's like you mean one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the entire world. It's really funny knowing that I've had a conversation with someone that basically had a bit of like a, an angry reaction when they were like, well, I watch One Piece and no one else I know watches One Piece. I was like, oh yeah, I love One Piece. One Piece is super popular. And they had an argument with me because... You don't love it as much like, as them? They couldn't... Well, no, they couldn't pass in the head that One Piece was popular. It's like, it's the most popular thing in the world at the moment. But again, I could kind of notice that to them, that was me attacking them and saying, you're not special. Yeah, a part, like, like, you know, a part of their personality is based on the fact that this thing is unique to them. It's like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. original formative years. It's like, it's like when people find a band. So, you know, when you first discover like a band, like, I'm sure you, like, me and you've got pretty similar taste in this regard, like, me- My Chemical Relatively. Romance. Mm-hmm. When you first listen to My Chemical Romance, and literally nobody else that you know has heard of this band. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you know, your parents don't listen to modern music. Your friends probably don't listen to the same kind of thing. So you feel like it is, you've only, you're the only person who listens to this. And then you mm-hmm. get older and realize, well, no, they've got, like, best-selling albums and <laughs> millions of people like this thing. Yes. And you realize, yeah. oh, some people go down one path of, oh, here's a community they can join of people who have a shared interest. And other people, like, they get annoyed. Because now, as I said, they're not special anymore. Yeah, I I thought this was a cool, unique part of my own personality, and it turns out it's not. And, like, yeah, I can see why that is hurtful, and I can see why that gives people a moment of, like, disruption almost. But it's just one of those things of it's a much healthier way to view it of, like, oh, cool, well, everybody then has more access to this i can have conversations with people about this i can become as you say part of a community and it's just it's uh i would encourage people to take that viewpoint rather than take the 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 root of animosity around it all but i can understand why someone would be frustrated by it because some you Mm -hmm. know if you've not got the best amount of emotional intelligence and you lack the ability to pass those feelings most people, when they don't understand something, do get angry. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things that I don't want to be this person on a podcast. Like, oh, I, I would never understand why somebody would become this way. Yeah, I do. It's I like, was like that no, when I was 15. I, I get it. I get it. But yeah, maybe we should all make an effort to move on and realize that these eight games exclusive to a console are maybe not the most important thing in the world. And that if we all just play games together it'll be fun and that's like it's meant to be fun it's meant to be video games like entertainment it's ultimately it doesn't matter no it doesn't and um you know i just kind of with all the the kind of discourse lately about how important xbox exclusives are and all that jazz i just wanted to discuss like there really aren't many exclusive games anymore maybe like you could make an argument for nintendo games as i say but even then, it's like, it wouldn't really matter to me if you could play Zelda on a PS5. I'd just have more people to talk about Zelda with. That, that's the thing. It's like, uh, and you know, being, I'm using language dismissively here, of like, it doesn't really matter. I understand. Media does matter. I, I talk so much about, mm-hmm. you know, it can have yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, getting specifically pissed off at this aspect of media is like, you know, it's relatively pointless. Yeah. And, you know, we are all against gatekeeping here on wiki weekends we encourage 
everybody to just enjoy what they can. We encourage people to allow new people into their communities and you know try and grow their own communities and stuff like that. It's just it's always horrible to to see messages of oh well I tried to get into this thing that seemed really cool and. I just got bullied out of it immediately by gatekeeper assholes. Well, it's, it's the the hipster mentality, isn't it? Of um, mm-hmm. you know, we're content creators, so you know, for years I would just be on the receiving end of like we'd done the same thing day in day out for seven years straight. But people, oh, it was better before. Before what? When less people liked it, and I made less money. <laughs> same with the bands, isn't it? Oh, they got popular now. They suck. It's like, like what was the band we like? Bring me the horizon. Yeah, when they started I, um... making pop music and stuff, and I was like, oh, it was better when they sucked. And so like, Ollie Sykes himself has said, no, it isn't. We get to do what we want now. We've now got the success that lets us make the music we want to. Surely fans would want us to make the music we're happy making. I've become a, a quite a big fan of Bring Me the Horizon over the past few albums they've put out and stuff. Because they're having fun. When they've made more, you know, active change towards mainstream music with, uh, I think it was That's the Spirit was the album. They yep. they kind of started really making a push towards quote-unquote mainstream audiences. And yeah, I started listening to them then and I've got shit from so many people because I'm not a real fan. It's like, but I've spent the last 10 years enjoying and listening to their music. Does that not make me a fan? It's like the Metallica thing, isn't it? When they had the song in Stranger Things and like they post mm. a clip on their official Instagram. And the official Metallica Instagram had to respond to like a weird gatekeepy fan of like, oh, if this is what, if you hear from Stranger Things, you're not a real fan. And Metallica's like, what? We've sold a million <laughs> albums this week because of this thing. Why would we not want people from straight? Like, why would you want us to make less money? Yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, this has been a very long podcast for us. Um, We've been just making the same point for the past half an hour. We have been, and hopefully that drills the point into people's heads a little bit. Just at how much we have to say it over and over again. Yeah, and I guess no matter how many times we will say this, somebody out there will still no doubt turn around and be like, no, this is a terrible take and I hate you and this console for life. And there's going to be someone out there like, Sega does what Nintendo don't. I don't care what you say. They haven't been making consoles for 24 years. There's still someone who's mad that I an iPhone. There's still someone mad that, like, my favourite console isn't a Dreamcast, Carl. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone. It's like, to that person, I just, I just hope that... I hope it's enough. That's all I say. I, I hope that's enough. And, you know, to try and end things on a more positive note right now... Yes. Uh, other than joining our Discord to let us know which wiki won this week... I would say, you know, just go in the comments and let us know what your favourite exclusive game is, regardless of console, and why people should go check it out. Well, that's the thing, just yeah. Not in a nasty way, just like, share a game that you like. Just do that. Future Cop LAPD, Smart. let's go. And it, you know what? Just share a game you like. It doesn't even have to be exclusive. Who cares? That's the point. Share a game you like, people. I do I do all that trend recently though, where it's like online people are like sharing popular well known albums, like albums so good I've got to gatekeep it. And they're like <laughs> badly censoring it and it's like Abbey Road by the Beatles. <laughs> just to take the piss out of that trend of people being like, I've just heard a great album, we're not gonna tell you what it is. Because I mm. need to be the only one who listens to it. Famously, only three people in the world will listen to Abbey Road. That's like, there's someone out though who's probably like done that. If I listen to the Beatles for the first time, I bet no one's heard of this band. (laughs) This little band from Liverpool that no one's heard about. It's band. Oh dear, but thank you all for going on this journey with us this week, as always. And, you know, just go leave a like, subscribe if you'd like to. Not going to force you to. If you're on podcast services, go leave us a nice review if you'd like. You can also leave a dislike, but no one sees that. We see it, we, and it hurts my feelings. I still think that's bit. one of the funniest things, where they just removed that from the internet, and people got really <laughs> mad about it. It's like, well, the worst part is, is they didn't remove it for, like... Content us, creators. So we can still see our oh, people shat on you this week. Um, but yeah. but it's it very funny, though, they made it so, like, clicking the dislike um, button does nothing. It does nothing. It does nothing it to it the just, outside observer. You are screaming you get into to the void. scream into the void. It's like I always said, there's that great um, Jason Manford joke about it of um, like football players and they get yelled at by the players they should just stay for an extra half hour 
to let them do it. For the money they get paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just stand there, let them do it. Oh. Does this make but you feel we better? Don't, we don't get paid very much, no. so please be nice to us in the comments because if you know when we start making sixty grand a week or whatever, like a footballer does to get make these podcasts, I will sit here for an extra hour and just take abuse from well, people. It's yeah, like sure. that thing. It's like, do you think Microsoft cares? Do you think Microsoft <laughs> cares that their games aren't exclusive or people are mad about it? Like, that's the thing. Do you think they give yeah. a fuck that you're there on Twitter, like yelling at people because like they want Halo on the PlayStation 5? And in fact, they actively encourage you the opposite way of just share games with people that you like and go enjoy gaming. Like the companies themselves are like, stop being weird console fanboys. It's not healthy. Buy our rectangles. Buy our rectangles, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for listening.